Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Joe Macari, I'm bringing you an in-depth look at one of the supercar legends, a 1968 Lamborghini Miura. This specific car is finished in Giallo Sole, and has received over £100,000 worth of restoration to bring it to the near-perfect condition you see it in now. The Miura departed from the 2 plus 2 seat layout and front-mounted engine position of previous generations of high-performance cars, and instead opted for two-seat, rear-mid-engine position, which was one of the first of its kind. It's 4.36 metres long and has a dry weight of 1,125 kilograms. The Mura's elegant lines were starred by Batoni, and in particular, a young designer called Marcello Gandini. Production of the Mura began in 1966 with the first generation, which this model falls into, known as the Posteriore 400, or P400 for short. This name was used in reference to the location and displacement of the engine. Several one-off versions were created, but only two Lamborghini-produced models followed it, each with increasing power. First, the P400S, and finally the SV, with production finishing in 1973. This P400 is powered by a transversely rear-mid-mounted variant of the 400 GT engine. The engine itself is a naturally aspirated 3.9-litre V12 that produces 345 brake horsepower and 355 newton meters of torque. This can achieve a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 7 seconds and a top speed of 175 miles per hour. At the rear is a dual exit ceramic coated exhaust, which is another component that has been recently restored. It sits on centre locking 15 inch wheels with Avon tyres, much thicker than those found in today's cars. Let's now take an in-depth look from front to rear. The front grille runs throughout the front bumper and can be seen throughout the small slit below the main opening. On either side, below the top lip, there's an indicator and auxiliary light. Above these are the pop-up yellow tinted lights with those iconic eyelashes that are actually a sign of this being a very early car. Sitting centrally is a raging bull with a stylized line running up through the bonnet. Further up are vents sitting on either side. These are designed to release hot air from the radiators at the front. As we run along the side, it's important to note several features. First, the silver side skirt which leads to an aesthetic air intake. It may also serve a purpose to cool the rear brakes. Next are the conical wing mirrors which provide minimal visibility but fulfill the aesthetic perfectly. Moving up and we see air vents coming from the roof. These will make more sense when we move to the interior. Moving down from these, we see design cues that allude to the essence of future models. Here, the pillar of the door is fitted with angular and quite aggressive black inserts. Behind are air intake slats for the engine. Slightly further back from this is the Batoni shield, just as Ferrari would have Pininfarina. The engine slats are behind, an aesthetic so strongly associated with Lamborghini now, and an option still available on current models. Here, this was a lightweight, easily engineered heat reduction solution. However, mirrors are unfortunately still known for bursting into flames. The rear of the bootlid has a small ducktail, so it doesn't slope completely down as some might expect. The rear also has several important features to point out. The Mura nameplate, stylized with horns and tail. The far more simplistic Lamborghini nameplate. And below, a hot air release grill runs the entire width of the rear. You can see how the beginnings of the hexagonal aesthetic for Lamborghini begins here. Now we've reached the rear, let's move inside. The keys are very simplistic being before the time of remote central locking. Once manually unlocked, we can grasp the handle like slat and depress the lock itself. The driver's door here wouldn't stay open, so I had to hold it. The interior has been recently refurbished. Here it's presented in narrow leather with a small wooden segment between the passenger and driver. Once again, I didn't record a POV tour, so we will start our interior in-depth look with the doors. Leather runs down all the way from the top pillar to the mechanical pop-up lock. This section finishes with the door release catch. Below is the leather upholstered armrest with the manual window winder further forward. Getting in and out, for me at least, was quite challenging. 
The sill itself isn't really that low or wide, but the interior space is quite limited. So at 183cm, the top of my head was brushing against the top of the car. There are no electrical functions or additions like you'd find in a modern car. So the first thing found when moving towards the steering column is a small metal lever, which is used to secure and release the front clamshell. With each on either side pulled out, it can be released. The clamshell is secured by using a single line. Here are the radiators, a fire extinguisher and spare tyre. Moving back inside, there are similar levers for the rear clamshell that work in the same fashion. The steering wheel is simple, light and focused on driving alone. It is upholstered in leather with the bull sitting centrally. Behind there are only two dials, the speedo in kilometres per hour on the left and revs on the right. Jutting out of the central column at quite an angle is a dial ray. From left to right, water temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, an analogue clock, amps and fuel gauge. At the front of the central column is a further cluster of controls with the gear stick. The ignition slot, wiper controls, the lighter or 12 volt socket and the pop-up light switch. As seen here, the Mura has a 5 speed manual transmission. Unfortunately, but maybe not unsurprisingly, I didn't get to drive the car, so can't comment on how it was. On the passenger side of this cluster, a small handle has been built in, and a sign of the time of build, behind is an ashtray. On the driver's side, and slightly behind, the manual handbrake can be found, also upholstered in Nero leather. To save it from itself, a modern fire prevention system has been installed. No one wants to see their £1 million classic supercar go up in a fireball after all. Behind this, the wooden inlay sits above two air vents strangely positioned behind the cockpit inhabitants. These open easily but don't seem to twist. The driver and passenger do have quite a good view of the mechanicals behind them. Despite the restricted interior space, the seats themselves are quite comfortable. They're manually adjustable with the main slider found underneath. Above, the origin of the exterior vents I showed you earlier can be seen. It clearly gets quite warm in the cockpit of a Mura. As we approach the end of the tour, let's take a look at the Mura's storage capacity. There's a small open glove compartment on the passenger side, but nothing in the doors. Outside, there is a rear boot that apparently has a capacity of 140 litres. The lid is opened easily and is supported with a short flip-down leg. It's currently holding the indoor cover. Back inside, and the driver and passenger both get non-illuminated sun visors, with the passenger getting a vanity mirror. In between there's a host of switches for the exterior and interior lights and demist function. Apparently, the function of these can vary between models. So that concludes my tour of this elegant Mura P400. Thanks again to the guys at Joe Macari for allowing me to film. All their contact details can be found in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, cheers.